Our gracious Father, we come again with bowed heads and on hearts. Father, we thank you for being so good. Oh, you've been so good. We thank you for our last night lying down. You watched over and you kept us when danger was all around. Father, we weren't even aware of the danger, but you were so good that you protected us and you allowed us to see this day that wasn't promised to us. Father, we say thank you right now. While the blood is yet running warm through our veins, we say thank you. Oh, you've been good, Lord. We lift you up right now because you're worthy. And that's just our servant come. I pray that you, oh, Father, will take me out of self. Speak through me and speak for me. Have your way. Bless your preach words, Father. Bless your words that the believers may be strengthened. Bless your words that backsliders may be reclaimed. Bless your words that sinner men, women, boys, and girls will come running to the altar saying, what must I do to be saved? Have thy way. We welcome your spirit right now. Oh, we welcome your spirit. Oh, we welcome your Father to have your way. Move on the altar of our hearts. Oh, we ask that you teach our souls to say yes to your will. Yes to your way. Not our will, but your will be done. Oh, we lift you up, Father. Oh, we thank you. We thank you for being so awesome. We thank you for being in a class all by yourself. We thank you for being so good. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your righteousness. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the redeemer of the Lord say, in the name of Jesus. In the, amen. Amen. Giving all praises to our Heavenly Father, to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to be here. Amen. In the house of the Lord, one more time, we just thank God for a safe journey. We traveled down to Louisiana on Friday. I had to preach a funeral on Saturday, and we traveled back this morning. We thank God for his traveling grace. Amen. The family and all those that went down. Amen. We had a great time. Amen. A celebration, a home-going celebration. And not only that, we had time for families to reconnect with one another. I tell you, God is awesome. And sometimes I just think that we don't realize how awesome God is. And many times we take what God does, we take it for granted. We Stop saying amen. We stop saying thank you, Lord. We stop saying praise you, Lord. We just expect for God to do it and just go on about our business. But, oh, I heard the psalmist say, let everything, good God Almighty, are, are, are you something today? Because if you're something, the psalmist say, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And you may be standing here and you may feel like you don't have any reason to say thank you, Lord. You may think that you don't have a reason to praise him. But I can tell you just today why you got a reason. Because he woke you up this morning. Y'all don't hear me. He started you on your way. Woke you up in your right mind. Somebody don't know how important it is to have a right mind. You didn't have a right mind. You couldn't have got up and dressed yourself. You couldn't have closed yourself. You couldn't have fished you something to eat. Amen. You couldn't have made your way to the house of the Lord. God's been good to us. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be here long. Amen. I'm just going to dust said the Lord and do altar prayer, deliverance, communion. And we're going to say amen. Amen. From 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 16 through 19. 1 Peter chapter. Verse 
verse 16 through 19. For our reading it says, Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, are there any Christians in the house? Peter writes, Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it's first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? Wherefore, well, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Amen. I just want to talk to you just, just for a few minutes while you're going through what you're going through. Amen. Why are you going through what you're going through? Amen. We, we find in the writing of Peter, Peter first tell us if any man suffer as a Christian, he says, let him not be ashamed. There are many believers that are suffering for the gospel's sake. And they are ashamed because the enemy uh, buff them and, and tell them that if you serve such a, a good God, mm -mm. don't that sound familiar when, when Christ was on the cross and say, if you be the son of God, and, and they tell us, if you serve such a good God, uh, why are you going through what you're going through? If, if, if God be, be for you, why, why does it look like you, you're going through so, so much? Yes, and sometimes we begin to question God ourselves because the enemy has put doubt in our mind that, that we are really walking upright with God, that we really belong to God, that God is really concerned about us. But you have to understand God's word because the same writer that said, if any man suffer as a Christian, he also said, cast your curls upon the Lord. Why, Brother Peter? Because Peter said, you know what? God cares for you. Yes. Somebody in the world, your friends, your, your family may not care about you or, or what you're going through, but he said, there is someone that cares about you while you're suffering as a Christian. Yes, somebody cares about you. And I told them on yesterday, sometimes we get in relationships that we shouldn't enter into. We, we sometimes date people that we shouldn't date because we're looking for someone to care about us. When all we need to be concerned about is that Jesus cares about us. And you may be hearing, you may say, well, preacher, what do you, well, how do you know, no, no, he cares about me? I, well, when I look at his word, word I, I find that, that he know every string of her on our head. Y'all don't hear me now. If you still got all your hair, just, just rub your hands through. And if you ain't got all your hair, you remember when you had all your hair. That was a lot of strings there, and it's saying that God cares so much about you that he knows every string of her on your head. Then he says, the gospel said also that his eye is on the sparrow. And if God can see when a little sparrow falls to the earth and dies, aren't we more than a sparrow? And I want to tell you something else. The reason that God cares about you because in the, the, the book of Revelation it says that God has your name, that God knows your name. 
and your name has been written down. That's personal, ain't it? That's, that's kind of personal. I, I remember when I met, met my wife, we, we started coding, and, and, and it was just something about, baby, what's your name? And, and, and she wrote her name down. It was just something about knowing her name. When I called for her, I had to call and ask for her by her name. See, I couldn't just call asking for anybody because I probably would have got the phone hung in my face. It was personal, so when I called her, I had to ask for her by her name. Y'all don't hear me today. When we look at this, Peter said, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But see, there is a flip side to this because, see, sometimes there are some suffering that we're going through in our life because we are not suffering as a Christian. Can I get a witness? That there are some suffering that we endure because we are not obedient to God's word. There are some suffering that we endure because we bring it upon ourselves. And then we want to blame God. Lord, why I'm going through what I'm going through. No, you ain't doing what the words say. Lord, why, what happened? Why, Lord, it's just so rough. I, man, it's hard to be My lights got cut off. My water off. I ain't got no food in the kitchen. But well, I took all my money and I wasted. But, I, but, I, but, but I'm mad because now I'm suffering because of the consequences. And then the consequences that I'm reaping is because I brought them upon myself. The Bible says, be not mocked. Be not dismayed, for God is not mocked. It's the same thing that a man so it also shall be reaped. You don't have to go to a fortune teller to, to find out what your future is going to be. You want to know what your future is going to be? All you got to do is look over your past. So the Bible say, if you done reap some bad stuff, you're going to reap, you're going to harvest some good stuff. If you sow some bad stuff, you're going to reap some bad stuff. If you sow some good stuff, you're going to what? You're going to reap some good stuff. So anyway, he said, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on what? On, not on my behalf but on the behalf of, the, of what I'm going through. And then he says in verse 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Oh, hallelujah. Why did that? Why did that as believers, we think we can go and do any and everything? The church should have been full. They must knew what I was going to preach today. And it seemed like the very people that need to hear what I got to say, don't be here. But they can look at it on the website. Amen. Because what we have to understand, what it says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. You got to understand, God, judgment is going to first start at the house of God. And we run around here, we act like we can do any and everything that we want to do. We, we play on the grace of God because of grace, we, we think we can do it. In and everything, but I heard Paul say, shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. <laughs> then he said, there's no more offering or sacrifice for sin, but judgment will first begin at the house of God. And if the first, if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that Obey not the gospel of Christ or the gospel of God. If it's going to start, let's look at this now. If judgment first is going to begin at the house of God, those that have surrendered their life to Christ, those that have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, judgment is going to first begin with us. Good God Almighty. What shall the Envy of them that obey not the gospel of God. What shall the end be? The Bible say, Woe unto the man that falls into the wrath of an angry God. 
verse 18, he said, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, what shall the ungodly in the sinners appear? What shall the ungodly in the sinners? The ungodly in the sinners. What shall they appear? You got the ungodly? Then you got the sinners. What he's saying is that we got to stop playing church. Now I'm not saying that you're saved because of words. But what I'm, what I'm saying, my brother and sister, he's saying that we know what the ungodly is going to be. And evidently the sinners think they have obtained. So he let the sinners know that you're no better off than the ungodly. Then he said, Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we don't want to suffer. Sometimes we don't want to endure things in life. But many times we ask, Lord God, what, what is your will for my life? Whatever your will is, <laughs> y'all don't hear me. Whatever your will is, that, that's what we've been telling the Lord. Lord, whatever your will is, I will do it. But when we see verse 19, he said, according to the will of God. Wherefore let them suffer according to the will of God. See, it may be God will for you to God will for you to suffer in your life. That's what the word says. You gotta understand that oh a lot of people think just because I'm saved that I'm not never gonna go through anything. Mm -hmm. Just because I have given my life to the Lord, I'm not going to have any sickness. But I read right here, he says that, Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God. You see that? There's a key here. He's saying, if you're suffering according to the will of God, then he said, commit the keeping of their souls to him. And well doing. Other words, just because you're suffering, you don't give up on God. Oh, when you're suffering, you don't use that as an excuse to go out and do wrong. Yes, my brothers and my sisters. But he said, commit the keeping of the souls to him and well doing. As unto a faithful creator. How many of y'all know we serve a faithful creator? We serve a God that's able. We serve a creator that has all power in his hand. We serve a creator that is unstoppable. And he says, commit your souls unto him. Now you see, if God is able to create you in his image and he blow breath into your body and you become a living soul, he gave you a mind to think and gave you the activities of your limbs. And if God knows every string of hair on your head and he knows your name, surely God can keep your soul Ain't that all right? I feel real good right now. You see, sometimes you're going to have to go through some things. But I stop to tell you, you just stand on God's words. Can I get a witness now? And somebody just might ask you why you're going through what you're going through. Huh? You just stand and tell them why I'm going through what I'm going through. Huh? God is with me. Huh? Because the Bible said he won't leave me, nor will he forsake me. Ain't that all right today? 
as I hurry to a close right now, I want to tell you a story about the author, author of this book. His name is Peter. And who better to tell you about suffering than the apostle Peter? You got to understand that Peter denied Christ. Did he do it? He was suffering for the gospel's sake. He denied him. But I want to tell you something. A lot of times we talk bad of our brother Peter. But when I read in God's word, I see that he's the only one that stepped out of the boat and began to walk on the water. Now, didn't he do it? While folks were sitting back looking at him, he said, Jesus, permit me to come to you. And I start to tell you today, uh, you might be suffering. Uh, you all just say, Lord, uh, permit me to come to you. Uh, can I come uh, just as I know how uh, and get down on bending knees uh, and tell you, Lord, uh, all about my troubles? Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I want you to know prayer change thing. Uh, won't prayer change thing. Uh, where you to come short in your walk with the Lord. Uh, prayer will change things. Uh, when you deny the Lord. Uh, prayer will change things. Uh, when you are locked up. Uh, after Christ has been crucified. Uh, I heard uh, that prayer will change things. Uh, but I heard. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, things begin to change. Uh, on the day of Pentecost. Uh, Things begin to change. Then it change. I heard the same Peter that said any man suffer as a Christian. You ain't got to be ashamed. I'm, I'm quite sure that Peter was ashamed after he had denied the Lord. He was ashamed when he followed Jesus a fall off. He was ashamed when he was warming by the campfire of the enemy. But I heard you can have a little talk with Jesus. You can tell him all about your trouble. Won't he answer proud? Won't he come to your rescue? The Bible says uh, after they all they got one accord, they got all on one accord. They ain't got on one accord with one another. See, sometimes we look at one accord at them being on one accord with one another, but they had got on one accord with God the Father, with God the Son. Yes, and with God the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says. Good God Almighty, God the Holy Ghost, say I got to go for a while, I got to lead the Father and the Son, and I got to go, for the promise will be fulfilled, and I heard, it came as a mighty rushing wind, and it laid down upon them, and they began to speak, with cloven tongues of fire, and I, good God Almighty, Ain't it amazing how people show up when God is working on your behalf, when God is trying to change you, when God is trying to purify you, when God is molding you. Somebody show up and say, ain't nothing going on. Somebody show up and say you're faking. Somebody show up and say you drunk. But I heard that same Peter, good God Almighty, you know the same one that said, if any man suffer as a Christian, he stood up boldly, then he stand up. And I want you to understand, God needs somebody that don't mind standing up. And Peter stood up. Yes, he did. He said, it's too early. Good God Almighty. It's too early in the day. We ain't drunk as you suppose. We ain't drunk as you've been saying. We ain't drunk as you've been thinking. But it's that same thing. 
Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> he reached back. <laughs> Sometimes you got to reach back. <laughs> you got to reach back. In God's word, <laughs> Peter reached back <laughs> to the book of Joel. <laughs> he said, they not drunk. <laughs> As you suppose, but it's the same thing. Look at somebody and say the same thing that the prophet Joel prophesied about. That in the last days, oh, that in the last days, that in the last days, I'm so glad about the last days. Good God of my, a change going out to come in the last days. Yeah, good God of mine. That in the last days, in the last days, in the last days, you see, you've been shutting up this gospel. You've been keeping heaven from everybody. You've been walking around here. Acting like you got the keys to heaven. Yes, you scribes and you Pharisees and you Sadducees. But you know what Jesus said? God said, this is what I'm going to do in the last days. I'm going to pour out my spirit. Good God Almighty. Can't you see God just pouring out his spirit? Yes. And his spirit is just consuming all of us. He poured out his spirit. So they say, oh, the old man should dream dream. The young man should see big. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Shall prophesy. And a little witness, a maid servant shall prophesy. You've been shutting it up for too long. Why are you going through what you're going through, Brother Peter? Peter said, I'm not worried about what I'm going through. I'm not worried about what I'm going to have to endure because I know if I suffer, as a Christian, how many of y'all know he suffered? Yes, he suffered. Somebody here saying, how did he suffer? Well, I want to tell you how Christ suffered. You see, Christ was beeping your recognition. He was marched down the streets of Jerusalem. They made fun of him. They laughed at him. They spit upon him. And when they got him to a hill called Cary, they nailed. How many of y'all know they nailed him? Good God of mine. They didn't have to use no nail because it was love for you and me. It was love that held him to that cross and he died for your sins and mine. But I'm so glad that he didn't stay dead. The Bible says, early Sunday morning, he got up. He got up. See, he ain't like us. You know, a lot of us ain't never early. We always late. When it comes to our jobs, we're late. We're late when it comes to church. Oh, but I'm so glad that early Sunday morning, it was early. You see, Narina was so early because he was in a hurry to get on up. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. 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 Come early. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah! 
Ain't he all right? Ain't God good today? Why are you going through what you're going through? Oh, I'm not worried about what I'm going through. I'm not going through it by myself. You just see me. But I heard, great is him that's in me. Great is him that's in me that you don't see. Then it is that's him that's in the world. And if God be for me, I can go through what I'm going through. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Peter, he was crucified on the cross. But he said, I'm not worthy to die the same death. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to die the same death as Christ. So he asked him to crucify him upside down because he was not worthy to die the same death that Jesus died. The son right to say, must Jesus bear the cross alone? There's a cross for all of us. There's a cross for you and me. Hallelujah.